Good morning, everyone. Uh, great to have you here at our new headquarters in uh, Menlo Park. Uh, last time we saw you guys, uh, last time we participated in Network Field Day was a year ago. And a year is really an eternity in the life of a startup. And so I thought I'd give you a few of the most significant uh, updates uh, for this year. Um, number one is, of course, our, our customers. Uh, you know, last year we had focused initially on our cloud provider customers. And you know, one of the first customers we announced was Yahoo Japan, a cloud provider. This year, uh, you know, we've added many, many customers. And um, mostly there were many new enterprise uh, uh, customers. Fortune 500, Global 2000, mid-size enterprises. Uh, really excited to get these, uh, these customers in production with, uh, with Appstra. And this is really a reflection of our strategy uh, where we focus on the enterprises in addition to cloud uh, providers. Uh, and we've had uh, really the opportunity to measure the early impact uh, of AOS and our powerful automation on the operations of those customers' infrastructures. And these are a few uh, of those early uh, you know, measurements. Uh, one of our uh, top system integrators uh, actually made a task list. Uh, they've done this for 20 years in terms of deploying data centers, and they've put together a task list of all of the tasks involved in deploying a, a data center. Anything for, everything from conceptual design to you know, conf writing configurations, cabling, cabling verification, and every step in between. And what they've done is compared you know, without Appstra, how many manuals it would take, and with Appstra, how many manuals it would take, and the difference was 83%. It's a very exciting uh, you know, uh, result. You know, it matches uh, what industry experts uh, had in mind. You know, in fact, Gardner said uh, somewhere between 50 and 80%. In fact, we improved on that, not surprising given the power of the intent-based uh, approach. Um, and even more importantly, in terms of business agility, uh, again, this is a, one of our largest customers. They've measured that the task, like deploying a pod, which took them a week, now takes them two hours. Right? So that's a 99% improvement. And the reason it takes two hours is because there are still manual tasks that need to be performed, stacking and racking. When it comes to virtual constructs, like a virtual network, we all know the caricature application teams have of network engineering teams. You know, I fax them over you know, the request for a virtual network change. Maybe a week or two later, they, they fax us back a confirmation of this virtual network change. When it comes to securities groups, virtual networks, etc., you know, this can be done instantaneously with uh, AOS. And, and finally, last but not least, uh, reliability, availability. It's all about application availability. And while we don't have numbers, we have a few anecdotes I wanted to share. Um, first and foremost, you know, there's this customer uh, deployed Appstra across hundreds of uh, devices. They swore that every switch operating system version met compliance, you know, was one of those versions that compliance had approved. Yet as soon as deployed Appstra, three out of those switches, you know, we, we identified that three out of those switches didn't have the right version of the switch operating system. That's, you know, done through our intent-based analytics, which we'll discuss uh, more uh, throughout, you know, these sessions today. Another example, you know, detecting that transceivers are about to fail. We've done that across more than once, across more, uh, with more than one customer where, you know, th through measuring those transceivers voltage, we have the ability to determine that a transceiver is about to change, uh, to, to fail before the transceiver malfunctions, which would create uh, a massive gray failure. So that's the, another example. And a third uh, example is, you know, one that we've seen also very commonly is that switch operating systems processes leak memory uh, once in a while. And when they do, you know, if they hit the, their maximum uh, you know, memory, then they, they can fail, which could cause catastrophic failures. With, again, with Appstra, we had the ability to identify those types of memory leaks and actually not only raise an anomaly, but also take self-healing action. For example, have the ability to bounce this process and restart it before it were to fail. In fact, you know, what we've seen is our customers see us as partners when it comes to qualifying switch operating systems. Uh, certainly, you know, qualifying switch operating systems is extremely expensive and uh, it's a lengthy process that could take months. And with Appstra, as soon as we, we, we have a qualified switch operating system, that's one that we guarantee works. And if it's one that's not 
on our qualified list. Our customers work with us, you know, half a day, we run it through thousands of tests, qualify the switch operating system version and make sure it works within the context of our uh, use cases. So these are some ex examples of you know, early indications of our impact and it's really exciting. Um, another update, we participated in VMworld today, and we, uh, or this year, and we won best of uh, VMworld for networking. And it was really exciting. It was you know, against every vendor that actually uh, participated, established vendors and startups alike, you know, Cisco, Arista, Big Switch, Barefoot, uh, etc. So it was exciting to us. Um, and you know, what we had shown at VMworld is a first integration with VMware, actually with vSphere, and we're going to show some of that in our sessions uh, today. And you know, it makes sense as we go after the enterprise, right, as, as in, to solve enterprise uh, customer problems, we do need to partner, uh, and certainly VMware is one of those uh, large partners, software-based, like-minded that we are partnering with. We're now an official partner of VMware, and there's going to be more integrations uh, you know, coming up with uh, VMware products as we address the enterprise. Uh, last year, I know that uh, Sasha, my co-founder, talked about uh, intent washing. You know, Gardner uh, you know, came up with a report uh, talking about intent-based networking as this new technology that will dramatically improve network operations and design. Um, we also saw uh, Cisco and Chuck Robbins stand up on stage and say that intent-based networking will redefine networking for the next 30 years. So it's not surprising that we've seen a lot of intent washing, you know, uh, vendors jumping on the bandwagon and claiming that they're intent-based networking, causing a lot of confusion in the market. So this year, what uh, Sasha uh, Retkovic uh, did, uh, again, my co-founder, uh, was to write this article uh, in network world that really defined the levels uh, of intent-based networking solutions and what it really meant to be an intent-based networking solutions. You know, everything from level zero basic automation which, with, to level three, which is real intent-based networking. It's very similar to, you know, in the autom automotive space, the Society of Automotive Engineers came up with a scale, level zero to level five of autonomous driving. Level zero, zero being no, autom no, no automation, level one you know, being driver assistance, you know, think of glorified autopilots all the way to level four and level five, which is really full, uh, full, full autonomous uh, driving experience. You know, and vendors such as Tesla, from the beginning, they, you know, they focus on delivering level four to, four to five, whereas most vehicles on the market today deliver, you know, level one to level two. It's similar here. If you look at all automation systems in the, on the market, most of them, they're somewhere between level zero basic automation to level one single source of truth. With Abstra, our ambition from the beginning was to get to level three, and we've built AOS from the ground up to deliver on self-operation uh, level three. Today, we are at level two, and we're rapidly progressing towards uh, level, level three. And that, to us, is uh, what intent-based networking is. And in fact, this report, this article, has been uh, mentioned many times, in fact, with our customers. It was a big success with, our, with analysts, because it really you know, clarifies and, and, and provides clarity to what otherwise uh, can become uh, confusing. Also last year, uh, after camera shut down, we gave you a preview of intent-based analytics. When it comes to self-operation, a critical aspect is closing the loop. Have the ability to collect telemetry. You know, there's a saying, you can't operate what you can't measure, and in fact, you can't heal what you can't root cause accurately. And so having that ability through our intent-based analytics is critical to delivering on self-operation. Today we're going to show you quite a few demos, but we have executed impe impeccably towards delivering on intent-based analytics. We have customers running intent-based analytics in their networks, hundreds of these probes, uh, you know, checking re in real time, uh, continuously, uh, any condition from you know, compliance, connectivity, <coughs> performance, traffic. And in fact, we've generously actually uh, 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 contributed all of these back into our GitHub community, where you can find, if you go to uh, GitHub uh, or Abstra, Abstra's GitHub, and under IBA, what you'll find is 50 plus of those probes, uh, really, it, 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 uh, that, uh, that are involved in those types of validations across all these different uh, categories and we actually would welcome 
contributions from the community. We encourage our customers, our partners, our community as a whole to contribute to our uh, GitHub uh, repository. And you know, while this is all very exciting, this is just a starting point. We're still in the early stages of our journey. And in fact, today, uh, when the cameras will shut down, uh, we're going to show you a sneak preview of what's coming next when it comes to intent-based analytics. And you know, we're really excited to be bringing all these to market. And uh, you know, one more thing, uh, which is uh, when we you know, when we started Abstra, you know, we had the ambition to powerful to, for, for, towards powerful automation. We wanted to deliver powerful automation of infrastructure. But another key aspect was we wanted to provide choice of vendors. It had to be done in a way where customers have choice. So we say, you know, provide the, all the advantages of choice without the disadvantages. So we de-risk choice. And in fact, two years ago, I remember uh, uh, being with customers and telling them about our ambitions to deliver multi-vendor eVPN. And I remember how skeptical they were. Oh, you know, getting eVPN to work between Arista and Cisco, forget it. You know, it's never going to happen. Their implementations are different, they're proprietary, etc. Well, this month, just this past month, we have deployed a pod with both within the same pod, Arista and Cisco switches, and with interoperable eVPN. You know, I really thought that was, to me, very impactful and very significant because it really reflects uh, our mission. You know, for us, it really goes back to our mission of delivering automation with, with choice. And it really highlights the importance for our customers to adopt loosely <coughs> coupled architectures, stay away from proprietary fabrics, and certainly stay away from management solutions provided by hardware vendors designed to lock you in into those hardwares. And so, you know, this was a really exciting milestone for us. Um, and with that, I'm going to introduce my colleague, uh, Mike Wood. Uh, joined the company recently over the last, uh, last three months now, three months? That's yeah, correct. As a chief marketing officer and VP product. Thank Mike, you. all yours. Hi, I'm Mike Wood, CMO and VP of product for Appstra. So I wanted to give you just a quick overview of our strategy. Some of these things we haven't shared live with anyone uh, yet externally. That'll give you the context of a lot of the demos that you're about to see. First of all, enterprises are building intent-based data centers. And they're typically starting at one of five different use cases. One use case is intent-based design. Second use case is intent-based analytics. You'll see a lot about that. Third use case is really intent-based operations and intent-based networking. This really also encompasses intent-based analytics and intent-based design. Really the holy grail for many of these enterprises is creating a self-operating intent-based data center. And this strategy really goes end to end, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Ultimately, where we see a lot of enterprises wanting to go is complete uh, automation, unified policy across multiple clouds, private, public, and hybrid. We're also seeing data centers really become more flat, more distributed, and more cloudified. What Appstra is doing is we're literally going in and automating not just the underlying network and switching. We've done that really well relative to hardware and operating systems, but we're expanding that to include things like workloads. You'll hear about VMware vSphere, for example. Also servers, whether they're connected via L2 connections or L3 connections. We see this really expanding north and south to include things like security, VPN, firewall. We hear a lot of enterprises asking us to continue to expand uh, this coverage and this automation. Load balancers is another area. You can see the stack would continue to increase. In addition to that, we see an east-west expansion, the incorporation of campuses, the incorporation of edge compute, of cloud, obviously, but even branch and mobile uh, implementations. So we really view this expansion of automation going north, south, and east, west. For us, it's absolutely critical to work with an ecosystem of partners. Appster doesn't go and develop, for example, firewalls, but we'll work with leading firewall vendors to perform that broad automation. Our vision is we literally see the logical walls for data centers evaporating and things becoming, regardless of where they're physically located, completely ubiquitous. We also see the entire data center, whether it's private, public, hybrid, multi-cloud, 
becoming automated, including all the network elements within those implementations. Our third part of the vision that we see is policies becoming unified, ubiquitous, and self-operating across network, applications, security, and compliance requirements.